What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So I think today we're gonna start on uh, working a little bit on the Audi, take a break from the Evo. Um, although I've been taking a break from the Evo, it kind of sucks, but um, the Audi needs some maintenance. The uh, the rotors and pads and everything in there is just, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start taking everything apart. I already have the calipers, uh, the front calipers um, already painted and done. So, we'll be throwing those on and we'll be redoing the rears. Um, while we're at it, I have custom stainless lines as well as uh, the Porsche calipers that came off of a McCann to, uh, to throw on there with the S4 rotors. So let's get to it. There she is. It actually looks a lot better in this lighting as far as the color goes. In cer certain lighting, it's, it's more green looking, but I like it, I like it this way. This looks good. So these wheels eventually are going to go. Obviously, we're going to do the calipers and everything else uh, in the next few days. But she's clean. It's going to go back to the detailing shop to get it touched up for the summer. And I wanted to show you guys the new setup over here. I got a new rack for just my own parts, my own personal stuff. Um, we also have a set of quick jacks. These are rated for 7,000 pounds, so we can use them on trucks when we uh, when we do wheels. Um, and I bought this toolbox. It's a Husky box, nothing too crazy, but I think for what we need in here, it'll be awesome. And this big locker to put all the detailing stuff in and whatever else we can fit in it. So the setup looks pretty good. It's a nice little, little corner for myself and obviously for the cars that do come in. Um, we have an airline drop here, which actually worked out perfect. So I'm real happy with this setup. Now, the big thing is, is actually going to be to fill it up with some tools because that's the next big step. Oh, and I got a new jack because we do use it from time to time. The other one was no good. And here are all the, all the brake pads and rotors for, for the Audi job. So let's get to it. Casper take off the wheels for me but man these things are looking crusty definitely seen better days so we'll dismantle everything and then I think I'm going to powder coat the backing plates uh, just to clean things up so it looks good um, and then go from there Quick recap, we took off the caliper, which is right there, nice and dirty. Uh, we disconnected the brake line. Those things suck. They just kind of screw into the back of the caliper right there. So you got to like twist the caliper off, which is not fun exactly. Um, and then we popped the rotor off. It was seized onto a little bit around here, but we're going to clean that up. Uh, before we put the new stuff on and I'm gonna take off the brake shield And I really want to do them even though even though you're not gonna see them there will be a peace of mind that they're nice and clean and looking better 
All right, so we'll pop that off and then we'll move on to the next side and then move on to the rears. Somebody tell me in the comments, I feel like the worst part of every freaking job that you do on a car is just getting the damn tools together for the job. Walking back and forth to the damn toolbox. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys have that same problem? And if you don't, what's the solution to it? Like, how do I fix it? You just got to walk back and forth. I think that's the only way. It takes up so much damn time. But now that I did the first one, I guess the rest will go much quicker, but it's just so damn annoying. All right, on to the rears. Um, I'm going to have to figure out how to release the parking brake. I think I could do that through OBD 11. I'm just going to have to look that up and see what the steps are for that. Um, just like so could release the parking brake and take off the caliper. Um, and while I was in here, I actually found some funny. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm gonna grab it. Where the hell is it? I was stuck in the fender line. That thing's huge. It's like half my thumb. All right, here's what I gathered. Um, so you go, you connect your OBD 11 and you release your parking brake when you're in the car. After you do that, you scroll down to your control units. Uh, once you're in here, you go down to 53, which is your uh, e-brake. Which is, where is it? Your parking brake. Once you're in here, you go to basic settings. And then this is going to ask you for your, for a channel. So to open the open the parking brake, it's channel seven. You hit done, and then you can hear it in the background. It's opening up. So it's going to take a minute. So now the parking brake is retracted. So once this is done, channel seven opens, and then you go to channel six to close your parking brake. So then that, that retracts the, um, or pushes forward the, uh, the parking brake. Once it's done, does that, then you go to channel 10 to test it after you're all said and done. Um, so for now, we're gonna leave it this way and uh, disassemble the rears, hopefully that worked. All right, so it seems like the parking brake situation with OBD 11 worked because I got the caliper off. So now I'm going to just disconnect the, the brake line right there and crimp it so it doesn't, so it doesn't leak on us and the caliper is out. Then I'll remove the caliper bracket so we can coat that too. And these pads definitely have seen better, better days. So I'm glad, I'm really glad that we're doing this because it, everything's shot. Um, I don't know when the last time this car had brakes done, but now everything's going to be nice and fresh. I can't wait for you guys to see the front caliper set up and the color that we chose for this car. Alright, the, the caliper bracket is off. Everything's right here, looking nice and crusty. Um, I noticed the, the rotor spins when uh, when you try to take this little bolt off, so I just stuck a screwdriver in there. Just be careful not to mess up the threads in there. Pop this off, garbage. Pop this guy off, the, the shield. We're gonna coat those, so when the new rotor sits, we're gonna have a nice black backdrop. It's gonna look nice and clean. I'll call that a successful night. Everything's disassembled. Let the old front calipers, front shields, rear calipers, rear shields, and a bunch of rust that came off the old rotors. That's insane. But it's all out, so looking much better in there. I'm gonna take my time and clean some of the stuff out. There's a bit of rust on the subframe there, so I'll try to clean that up and preserve it. Um, I have this CRC spray that I use. Um, I'll try to clean out the fender liners, and I definitely have to do the uh, the front liners too. I have to take them off on the other side of them 
inside the engine bay they all, they all look nasty so we'll clean that up you could actually probably kind of see in there it's pretty damn dirty so we'll clean some of the stuff up before we put everything back together and then the next project I guess will be doing the bags and the wheels so little by little but we have to get going on the Evo just to get that thing torn apart so little by little all right that's the end of day one we continue tomorrow so I finally made something that I wanted to do for a long time I made these little cover plates for the caliper this is the rear caliper I drilled a couple holes here with uh, and then threaded them so now instead of seeing the caliper with the teeth now you'll see it like a nice solid piece and obviously this is going to be powder coated to to match and I got these little button heads that I had to trim down to fit in here if they would just thread in that'd be fantastic there we go so and I have I have little um, lock washers for them as well. So we'll thread these guys in. After you cut a bolt, those threads are never perfect. So I actually tried to re-thread them so they would work in here. Sorry, a little off. There we go. So now we have a caliper that's like more full looking like a, let's say a Brembo or whatever but it's just a nicer look nobody's ever gonna see this shit but I like it it works all right now that the front plates are made they're ready to go to get powdered we're gonna blast them do a dual stage finish on them just like everything else I'm going to take apart the rear caliper so we can powder coat those to match um so what involves with this is taking a taking out the piston the seal uh the, the dust boot as well as the seal that's in there and then we'll take off the electric parking brake um maybe depending how this cleans up there might be a slight chance that i'll powder coat that even though you'll never ever see it but it's crusty as hell so i want to clean it up um that's pretty much it uh, so let's get to that i'll put you guys on a time lapse and you'll see how i take them apart that's pretty much all there is to it we got the inner seal out which is right in there if you can see it right in there there is a little seal that seals um, the mechanism that that releases and um, tightens your your e-brake there's a little seal that runs around here that goes around where is it that goes around and seals everything in here so this will just clean up because it's still a good unit um, now the caliper is pretty much bare so this is something that we can work with I just have to take off the uh, the bleeder which is right there and uh, we can work with this caliper as far as blasting dipping it whatever we got to do to it to make it clean and ready to accept powder so I'll do the uh, I'll do the other one and we'll continue the process. All right, we're in the middle of uh, assembling these calipers. 
I got the, uh, the calipers all taped up and prepped just so we don't scratch them in the process. And then over here I have all the seals, the boots, and the pistons ready to go. These things were covered in red paint or whatever the hell was on there. So we had to wire wheel all this stuff out and um, clean all these up with, uh, with paint thinner because nothing was coming off. Uh, these are all good. We have the calipers all blown out and clean, ready to go. So we'll get to it and uh, assemble these bad boys. Everything's all assembled, back together, looking good in there. We masked off all the uh, the pad surfaces so we don't have issues with pads sliding in and out. Now we'll just do the next one and then that's going to take care of the front ones. I just have to uh, pop the bleeders on and then we'll be working on the rears uh, hopefully today. Get them, uh, get them ready and coated. I have my brother Casper get these nice and prepped and they are this is just primer so we use a zinc rich primer to seal the steel and then they're going to get two coats of powder so we have the brackets obviously the calipers these are only going to get a two-stage finish because they don't really need primer these were older so we wanted to seal them and we have the backing plates they're getting primed and those are going flat black in color everything should look good we have all the calipers pretty much ready to go. The rears have been coated yesterday. My brother did me a solid. He stayed a little late, uh, coated them for me. I just cleaned up all the plugs and all the hardware that needs to go back in it. The fronts are done, as you guys saw. Uh, I'm gonna have to polish them a little bit. They've been sitting in the, uh, in the office for a while, so people have been touching them and scratching the hell out of them so i'm going to just give them a quick polish so they all look perfect and then the assembly on the car starts it's exciting so let's get all these uh the rear calipers back together and go from there All right, the first one's assembled. We got, sorry if you can see that, we have piston in, the outer boot, the inner seal, the little inner seal that, um, that connects the shaft to the motor. Um, can't forget that, almost forgot it. And obviously the motor is back on, so we're all good there. The caliper brackets are all assembled. I re-greased the pins nice and lubed up now, so this should be good to go. Uh, we'll put that together when we're back on the car. Uh, so I'm going to do the other rear, clean up a bit, and then uh, and then we'll see what we want to do next. 
I gave them a little quick polish. Back to looking good. I like it. And this is all powder. There's no stickers there. So we stenciled everything in. So this stuff takes forever to do. But, you know, the end result is worth it. At least to me it is. Makes it makes it legit. I think we're all set now. Calipers are together, all the parts are laid out on the table. Brake lines, pads, calipers, grease, rotors, little ECS pad sensor, delete. Got my new little cover plates and the bolts to match. These are the clips for the pads for the rear calipers. And we redid the, uh, the backing plates or the heat shields, I should say. Um, for all four corners and we got some fluid hopefully it's enough um, yeah so let's get to it but actually before we do that I want to take the time and uh, and just clean up some of the corrosion that's around the hubs here maybe clean some of this up before we start assembling stuff together because it's pretty damn crusty we had a little bit of an issue getting the rotors out so I want to wire wheel that clean I was able to uh, get the fender liner out. You can see straight through now, through in there. Everything's out of there. And I'll show you guys why I took it apart. Because you see it straight through there and right by the intake over here, you can kind of see how filthy it is. And it's really hard to clean. So I figured it'd be the easiest way to, uh, to get it removed. And then I'm gonna have to scrub this down because our power washer took a crap so we'll get this wet I guess and scrub it down but it's it's filthy and you see it through the engine bay so this is the time to do it it's a good thing I took off these fender liners look at all that that's insane that was all stuck behind the fender between the fender and the body there's more in there I'm gonna vacuum all that out. That's that's what creates rot. It just holds moisture and just destroys your car. So I'm glad I took these things out. That's insane. Look at that. That must have been there for years. When I first got the car, I was missing I was missing a little clip that goes here. So I cleaned out the other side, but it wasn't this bad. I didn't even think to clean out this side because it wasn't so bad, but that's that's bad.
it's not exactly fun to do, but hopefully they'll be a little cleaner now. We'll leave them out in the sun, let them dry. In the meantime, I think we'll do, um, we'll start on the rear calipers. Everything over there has been cleaned up already, so I think it's that time. We'll let these dry out and uh, continue on. Buddy boy got some exercise, but in the meantime, I replaced this uh, the brake line. It's actually really easy to do. All you have to do is get a uh, 11 mil, unscrew the uh, the line using a line wrench. Otherwise, it's sometimes you could strip these if it's not a line wrench. And then this one just screws right in. So this one was fairly easy. We got some leaks. Uh, I'm gonna see if I could get a plug for that and see if I could plug it up so it doesn't leak. Uh, we're gonna flush out the um, the brake fluid with the new stuff, anyways, but it's making a mess, so let's clean it up. So I'm working on these rear calipers, and I realized something. When I made these little cover plates, I uh, didn't take account that the caliper bracket has this stupid notch, so I had to notch it. Kind of sucks because now it's an exposed edge, but I think it'll be fine. It's aluminum anyway, so I think we'll be a okay. So what I'll be doing now is I put this one all together. I put this one all together um, so I can mark up where the notch needs to be, and then um, we'll notch that one, and then I'll show you guys how I put together the other side of the car as far as the rear goes. got a notch this will work let's get started on the other side all right this is where things start to get a little messy with the brake fluid but just got to get it done so up here is where you disconnect your your brake line which is dripping down there and then that takes an 11 mil I usually like to use the um, the line wrenches for that just because it doesn't strip them and uh, it's it's under pressure on this little clip if you can see it in there so you just gotta little by little and there we go I'll break break my usually has uh, a bunch of dirt up here so you want to clean that out. You're always going to get some brake fluid running around. And this is the new stainless hose. So you have a female end and a male end. This this end gets screwed to the uh, to the caliper obviously and this one goes up here. But you can kind of see the difference between the two. This one gave me a little issues. The uh, the little nut, the flare nut that's on here, it's it's kind of tight against the uh, against the line. So I didn't really want to thread in all that easy, so I had to fight with it for a little bit. But it's finally in, so let's just get it tight.
the time for the time being I have this uh, this little silicone plug. I'm just gonna plug it so that way it doesn't leak on us. All over the place, make a mess. Already made a mess. So now that's plugged up. I like to use this um, this CRC heavy duty corrosion inhibitor. It's almost it almost dries up like a wax. If you can see that. So I'm gonna spray all the um, all the steel parts, a little bit of the aluminum, um, so that way we don't have any crazy corrosion issues. And this stuff works really well. It kind of preserves things for you. Once that stuff is dry, it kind of dries up like a wax, so you know it doesn't really do anything to anything. So it works out well, especially in the Northeast where we get a lot of uh, a lot of salt. Now that that's done, I have the um, the their heat shields ready to go back on. They're far from perfect, but at least they're protected now. Once aluminum or steel kind of corrodes and there's a bunch of imperfections in it. Sometimes it's hard in the oven for it to uh, for it not to bubble the finish. So this obviously did a little bit, but at least it's going to look nice and dark, and it's going to be much much better than it was. That was good. Harbor Freight BS. This is probably one of the worst parts about doing the rear calipers is um, you have to take the caliper and literally spin it onto the brake line as there's fluid le leaking out of it. So it becomes a mess and it's really hard to line up sometimes uh, to get a seat correctly so you can thread it all the way in. Um, so I'm probably not going to show this because it just becomes a whole mess but essentially what you do is take the, take the caliper and thread it onto the brake line. Um, and then get a type at the end after it's seated um, So it's a, it's a little bit of a process, but hopefully this one goes smooth. We'll see and it's, it's same thing goes for the fronts I don't know why Audi d does this but you know normal calipers have almost like a banjo bolt uh, That goes through it and then you could just use a regular bolt with um, With a hole in it to, to transfer over the fluid, but not this stuff All right, now that the caliper is back on, the line is in, I'm gonna take this line wrench and tighten up the, uh, the, the rear brake line on the caliper. Um, and then all we have to do back here is just pop our new plate on that kind of covers the whole center here. That's the whole purpose of it. I know it's probably silly, but take the plate, pop it on, and now it looks more of like a solid caliper rather than, you know, kind of like a shitty one. Um, a lot of the AMG cars, they have like these uh, these little AMG plates, but their um, their rear setup doesn't have this notch in here. So that was the whole idea behind it. Except I screwed up and I had to make a notch, but it doesn't look too bad. I think it'll work. It cleans things up, so I'm happy. And the rear is done. Looking good. Got a little gap up top, but once the wheel is on there, you're never going to see it line is in everything's nice and tight plugs all back in I should do the trick all 
One thing that I totally forgot about is to hang the brake, brake pads in the caliper. So I just glass beaded the, uh, the plates and the pins that go into it that hang through the pads. So they're not perfect, but glass beading actually will clean up a surface really nice and leave the original finish on it, which is, which is kind of nice. Um, and I can't forget about this. I gotta pop that in so we don't have a light. Um, so let's get the calipers together with the pads mounted in there. And that's all in. So in case you haven't done this before, it's very simple to do. You basically put the two pads in, slide the, the first pin through, then you take your plate, slide it underneath, sorry, slide it underneath the pin. And then as you're sliding through the second pin through the pads, you make sure that you press down on, on the plate and then slide everything through. So that way it holds your pads up. It holds your pads up so everything's locked in. And then what you do is you take, um, you take a hammer and a pin. Let this focus. Come on. You take a hammer and a pin and then you hammer the pin all the way through until it's uh, protruding out the other side so you know everything's locked in. And then that's how that goes together. Um, after this, then it, they're pretty much ready to go on the car. Before we can put the calipers on the car, we have to replace the brake line, pop the heat shield on and the rotor, and then the caliper can slide on. We could tighten that and then that should be it. Um, I think as far as uh, bleeding goes, we're more than likely going to hold off till tomorrow. Um, I'll have Eric here with me so we could do it together uh, and just kind of bleed everything, uh, bleed everything right. Now we're getting somewhere. Calipers on, rotors on, heat shields on. These rotors are so much bigger than the A4 rotors. It's, it's kind of nice. <laughs> I like it. Um, caliper went on fine. That rear brake line screwing it on is always a fucking mess. Um, stainless steel line is in. And I put that waxy stuff around there so nothing corrodes. And then back here, which is really hard to see, but um, I put that, um, that sensor delete. Uh, plug in there and I just zip tied it to the ABS line, but this looks This looks official. I like it and the color the color of the caliper really goes well with uh, with the color of the car All right, it's the next day Eric's here. He's gonna help me out. He brought his pressure bleeder uh, I have a vacuum bleeder, but Eric found something on his website that he uses for work that it requires pressure bleeding. And there's a certain procedure that goes along with that as far as which caliper to do first. Eric, and it's the two fronts first? Yeah, driver front, passenger front, driver's rear, passenger rear. All right, so driver's front, passenger front, driver's rear, passenger rear. So that's what we'll do. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, hopefully everything's nice and solid. Yeah, hopefully she stops. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna pump this up to. It's gonna like, go on between 30 and 35 psi. All right. Oh damn, that's all the way up there. Yeah, it goes up there. It's taking a lot. Yeah, it's gonna force a lot. Almost at 20. Probably around 28 right now.
it's going. Mm -hmm. I got all the air out already. I just want to try to get some of the new fluid in. Yep. We're pretty much going to repeat this whole procedure on all four corners. We're going to do two fronts, then the two rears, double check everything, and then we'll go through the procedure of, um, of closing the rear brake with uh, OBD-11 and going from there. All right, Eric and I just bled the brakes. Uh, we did it one time around. He's actually gonna grab his car so we can kind of feel out the pedal feel, make sure that his is similar to mine and vice versa. But I think that, that pretty much did the trick. Um, we also did the close the parking brake procedure with um, OBD-11 and that's channel number six. So if you go back to the video earlier, um, I kind of showed you how to get to it with OBD-11 and you go to channel six and then that closes the parking brake. After the, it's closed, you go back into it and you do channel 10 and that, that kind of tests the brake for you. So once it's all tested, then you're pretty much all good to go. You're gonna hear the brake working. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, something to note with the McCann, McCann uh, calipers and S4 rotors, the stock 18 inch A4 wheels that you see back there. Um, although they clear, it's like a hairpin close. It's super, super close. So you're gonna have to maybe get a spacer like I am. Eric actually has a set of uh, 10 mil spacers on his car. I'm gonna swap over uh, for the time being um, and get this thing back on the road. I'll take it for a drive, see how it feels, and we'll go from there. That's the bay. Um, if you don't know, your brake fluid reservoir is right there. And um, yeah, pretty much it. So everything's looking good, everything's clean. And that's it. That's Eric's car there. We did uh, we did the wheels on Eric's car. It's looking fresh. That's actually a, a like a light gray metallic with a gold flake in it. It's pretty cool looking. But Eric's car is a B9. It's a really solid, clean looking car. I like it. And his interior is much nicer than the B8s, unfortunately. It's looking good in there all right so before we finish up I got one more thing to do um, underneath the cowl here there's always always a bunch of leaves and dirt that gets stuck in there so you want to make sure to clean that out there is uh, there's actually a drain hole which I'll show you uh, right in there um, that everything needs to drain by when I first got the car it was literally filled with mud and dirt um, that's how clogged and old that stuff was so you could probably see on mine here, um, there's already leaves and whatnot stuck in there. So every couple of months, you, you kind of want to, every couple of months, you kind of want to clean all that stuff out. Um, so I'm just going to take the vacuum and just kind of get all that dirt out of there, use some compressed air. And I'll try to show you right here. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but right down in there, where all those leaves are um, you kind of want to clean all that stuff out because water drains through there and you don't want dirt and moisture sitting in there so we'll do that now put the cowl back on and get the wheels back on and then go for the first drive hopefully everything's good no issues um, Eric and I spent a little more time we bled the brakes one more time just to uh, get all the new fluid through there. So we used all four bottles, which is two liters, which pretty much kind of flushes out the whole system. Uh, and then we'll be good to go. So everything's in and bled, but the stock wheels are super close. They clear, but they're super close. I don't know how they clear, but um, we'll more than likely get like a five or 10 mil spacer but it's done. It kind of looks shitty with the stock wheels, but once the BBSs are on here, I'll, I'll complete the look. It'll be good. But she's finally all done. I did a little brake and driving. Um, and then tomorrow we'll, we'll do a long, long drive out to Huntington. And then that's it. 
on to the next project. All right, it's now the next day. It's about, what time is it? Uh, it's about 11.30 at night. I just got finished uh, doing, doing an oil change on the car. Um, and we bled the brakes again. It had like a little, little bit of a soft spot as soon as you went to press down on the brake. So uh, the, last, uh, the last session kind of took care of that. So thank God, I thought it was something else, but I got rid of everything so now the car is perfect uh, like I said I just did an oil change on it so she's ready for her daily duties again um, I guess this will be the closeout of it I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video or got something out of it um, and then you, you know in the comments down below you can let me know what else you would like to see out of the Evo or the Audi or whatever you know if there's anything you guys are curious about I'll do my best to kind of um, you know take care of that and maybe show you guys um, you know about the cars and and everything else so uh, just keep me posted you know I'd like to interact with some of you guys I know a lot of you guys are my friends <laughs> so you probably don't give a shit about any of this but um, you know if there's some strangers out there let me know um, I definitely like to uh, to continue to keep doing this and uh, this this kind of has been a lot of fun for me so uh, you know sitting there on a Sunday just kind of tinkering with my car it's you know it's kind of it's kind of like what we all dream about you know so uh, anywho uh, this will be it for this video and uh, we're gonna start on the Evo soon so uh, stay tuned for that that thing's got to get torn apart I just bought a spare block for it um, it's a bare block it's from a from a JDM Evo so I think I, we just have to change a line to the head on it to make it work for the USDM cars. But um, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, anyways, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for staying in this long if you have. And um, that's it. Peace.